In the previous video, I showed you how to solve a system y prime equals a times y for a non-diagonalizable upper triangular matrix. But now we want to be able to deal with non-diagonalizable matrices in general. And it is at this point that I want to introduce you to something that you may or may not have learned in linear algebra. And that is that some square matrices are not diagonalizable, okay, but all square matrices are similar to a matrix that is what we say almost diagonal. So in some sense, we can say not all matrices are diagonalizable, but all matrices are almost diagonalizable. And they're similar to a matrix that we call the Jordan canonical form. So what I'm saying is, is that if A is an N by N matrix, then we can say that A is equal to P times a matrix we'll call J times P inverse. And what I've yet to tell you is exactly what the form is of both the matrices P at, that form the similarity transformation and the matrix J. So I'm going to show you what this form looks like, specifically when we have a three by three matrix. And there are essentially four cases for this Jordan canonical form. So you can have one eigenvalue for that three by three matrix. And it could still have three linearly independent eigenvectors. And if that is the case, then J is a matrix that is essentially diagonal. It's just lambda on the diagonal, because that's the one eigenvector, eigenvalue, excuse me, and then zeros on the off diagonal. So essentially, this is a matrix that has repeated eigenvalues, okay, but it's still diagonalizable. Now you could have one eigenvalue and you could have two eigenvectors, in which case J is gonna have a form where you have lambda on the diagonals. And then there is a one on the off diagonal right there between two of the lambdas or you could have lambdas on the diagonals and there's a one there on the off diagonal. And this is what I mean by almost diagonalizable because those matrices are as close to being diagonal as possible, except for there being a one in the off diagonal. And so either one of those two cases can happen when you have one eigenvalue or two eigenvectors. Now you could have one eigenvalue and only one linearly independent eigenvector. Okay, so in that case, you're gonna have J and it has lambdas on the diagonal. But now there's gonna be a one in between each of these lambdas on the off diagonal. Okay, so that's what J could look like. And then finally, the, the last case that we could have for a three by three matrix is gonna be two eigenvalues. Okay, and then there are two eigenvectors, one for each of the eigenvalues. So in this case, we have J, and then we have an eigenvalue lambda one, and then we'll have the repeated one, we'll call it lambda two, and the one, would specifically be between the two repeated eigenvalues. 
So the one cannot be between lambda one and lambda two. It would be between the two lambda twos on that off diagonal. And these are the four possibilities for a Jordan canonical form where you have repeated eigenvalues. I don't put down uh, the cases when you say have three eigenvalues because it is clear there would be three linearly independent eigenvectors and so it would just be diagonalizable. So these are the possibilities of what J could look like. But next, uh, we wanna know what is the similarity transformation P? What is that supposed to look like? Okay, and so I'm going to give you a sense of what the form of that similar, similarity transformation P would be. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're essentially going to fill P with eigenvectors and generalized eigenvectors. And we've seen generalized eigenvectors in a previous video, but I'm going to redefine them for you here. So we're gonna assume that, that we have a three by three matrix, it has an eigenvalue lambda, and we're gonna assume it only has one linearly independent eigenvector. So here we're going to let uh, A times our vector, we'll call it V, equal lambda times V. So in other words, we're saying that V solves the problem A minus lambda I times V equals zero. So that is my one eigenvector that corresponds to the eigenvalue lambda. We're gonna define a second eigenvector which we're gonna call a generalized eigenvector, we'll call that one, um, say, W1. And the way that we're gonna define it is we're gonna say that it solves A minus lambda I times W1 equals V. And that's how we defined it before. So the generalized eigenvector solves that problem, A minus lambda I W1 equals V. Okay, and now we're gonna need a second generalized eigenvector, and this we have not done before, but that's gonna be W2, and it's that A minus lambda I times W2 is going to equal W1. Now, why does that make sense as the definition? Well, we saw before that if you do A minus lambda I squared to W1, that's the same thing as A minus lambda I done to V, because A minus lambda I times W1 is equal to V, and that equals zero. But, in fact, you can do A minus lambda I cubed to W2, and that is, in fact, going to be A minus lambda I squared to W1 because, again, A minus lambda I times W2 is equal to W1, but we just showed that A minus lambda I squared W1 is equal to zero. Okay, so here we call W1 and W2 generalized eigenvectors. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let P be the matrix V, W1, W2. So what we do is we fill P, uh, not with the eigenvectors like we did for diagonalizable systems, but in fact, we fill it with generalized eigenvectors. Okay, so how does this whole uh, thing work? How does it apply to non diagonalizable systems. Well, let's look at that system. We're gonna let y prime equal a times y, where a is equal to 
P, J, P inverse. Okay, so we know that A has to be similar to a matrix uh, that is in Jordan canonical form. Now, I did not prove this earlier. I just stated this fact, uh, but rest assured that it can be proven. Okay, so then what we're going to have is that we have that Y prime is equal to P, J, P inverse times Y. And I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to multiply both sides by P inverse. So I'm going to have that P inverse Y prime is equal to P inverse P J P inverse Y. Okay, or I can have that P inverse Y prime using the linearity of the derivative is equal to, okay, well, we notice that P inverse and P cancel to give you the identity matrix. So I'm going to get J times P inverse Y. And so um, I'm going to let Z prime equal, or sorry, I'm going to let Z equal P inverse times y, so that my system now, by multiplying both sides by p inverse, is actually going to just be z prime equals j z. And you may think that we've introduced 99 more problems, but in fact, we have not because this system, z prime equals j times z, is a upper triangular matrix system because j, as you can see uh, from our Jordan canonical form, right, is always going to be an upper triangular matrix. And in fact, we can use the technique that we learned here to solve the upper triangular system where in fact uh, we can solve the parts of the problem uh, that are completely decoupled and then plug those solutions back into the other parts of the problem uh, to become non-homogeneous equations that we can solve. Okay, so we can now, uh, we can now solve the upper triangular system z prime equals jz and let our actual solution y equal p times z. So what we're doing again, because similarity transformations are a change of basis or a change of coordinates, is that we're changing the coordinates for this problem, y prime equals a y, to a coordinate system using the generalized eigenvectors, making the system simpler, making it upper triangular, and of the form z prime equals j z. And then once we've solved that simpler system, we can convert it back to uh, using y equals p times z.